Hello, everybody. One of the fun things about playing D&D is designing what your character looks like. When you're playing with minis, you've got a lot of leeway with what they look like by choosing different sculpts or painting them with your character's specific color scheme. But when you play online, you're often limited to whatever tokens you can find pre-made without a lot of options for customizing them. There's a lot of amazing token artists out there like Forgotten Adventures, Kaora, Devon Knight, Online Tabletop, and a whole bunch more. But if you want a lot more customization and you're into the lo-fi aesthetic of pixel art and like a portrait style, Reroll can be a great option. You can use it on the web or through the app available on iOS and Android. It's got free options, but to get access to all of the art and make unlimited characters, it's a one-time fee of seven bucks. Or it actually says 10 bucks on sale for seven bucks, but I've never seen it actually charge $10. So, you know, maybe a maximum price of 10 bucks. Uh, it's also usable as a visual character sheet, but I don't use that functionality at all myself. Uh, I just like to design characters, export the art, and then make it into a token using either Token Tool or VTTA's Tokenizer module, which I'll show you how to use in this video as well. Uh, if you just want tokenizer information, then use the chapter select in YouTube to skip ahead to its section. Whenever I cover something paid, I also like to mention that Reroll, the company who makes this uh, service, did not reach out to me and did not pay me or supply me the application for free or anything like that. I've actually used it since before I even started making YouTube videos. Anyway, the way Reroll works is that you can select from a variety of racial options, including Asmar, Tabaxi, Dragonborn, Dwarves, Elementals, Elves, Gnomes, Goblins, Goliaths, Half-Elves, Half-Orcs, Halflings, Humans, Warforged, and Tieflings. You can also modify some of the races to achieve bird folk like Aarakocra and Kenku, Minotaurs, Tortles, lizard, fox, elephant, rat, and bear folk. You can also pick between uh, masculine and feminine, but none of the options are restricted to either selection. It pretty much just controls what kind of underpants you want them to wear. All of the races are kept in a standard pose uh, so that items will fit across all of them. There are options for hair, clothes, armor, weapons, items, wings, shells, bases, and animal companions that you can select from. On top of those options, you can also make some color changes to really make your character your own. Let's create a character for ourselves and import it into Foundry. I'll be doing it on their web app so I can show everything more easily, but it all works the same on iOS and Android. I think they're actually just wrappers for the web app. Uh, I'm already logged in and on my character select screen where you can see some of the characters that I've already made for some of my players, uh, for NPCs, and for my own characters. In the top right, hit the plus icon and we can choose if we just want to do character artwork or if we also want to use it as a character sheet. There's an option for being guided through the character sheet process as well. We're just interested in art here, so click on character art only. We've got our list of races that we can choose from and let's cycle through a few just to see some of the differences. We've got Catfolk, Tabaxi, uh, Dragonborn, Goblins, and Living Constructs, Warforged. Uh, Let's start with a human female. There are predefined color options that you can flip through using the body arrows, or you can make your own color choice uh, using the hue, saturation, and brightness controls under hue, and you can also add a tint over the whole thing as well. Uh, we'll go over, or we'll start with option four for now with no other changes. There's a variety of facial options as well, but as you can guess with the low resolution art style, it's Kind of hard to see much of a difference until you get to the options that include scars, different colored eyes, and a whole bunch of different facial hair options. I like the scarring in face 7, and we can control color options on this as well. Uh, let's pump up the brightness so the scars are uh, a lot more visible. With this, uh, or with that out of the way, we can pick hair, which again has an awful lot of choices in it. Uh, option 16 has a cool balayage kind of gradient to it, so let's go with that. You're not stuck with any of these decisions, however. Uh, you can always go back and edit the core body features other than species. Uh, with all of our base decisions made, we can hit next in the top right hand corner, uh, and then we can give her a name. With those scars, she seems pretty badass, so let's name her something cool like Zeresh. Well, I think it's cool at least. Hit done, and you'll go to the showcase. Here we can click on the inventory tab at the top uh, to get to the screen where we can choose all of our gear. I like to start with the upper body gear and just click through a few that look cool until I find one that I like. 
Uh, some of them are almost full body robes, while others barely cover anything for those characters that askew armor or are more stylish. You'll notice that each option has this settings icon that appears over it. If we click on that, we'll find the same color changing options that we had before. We can do this on every item in the game. The colors will affect things differently depending on which item it is. Sometimes it will change just a certain part, and other times it will change the entire thing, but you can get some pretty cool results by making color changes to normal items, and you can start matching up items that wouldn't normally go together otherwise. You can also hit reset to go back to uh, the basic uh, color options. Let's go with this cool blue top with a green cape and a bandolier pouch kind of thing. Now let's take care of those legs. There are options for fabric pants, skirts, robes, and armor here, which we can also make color changes to. This light dress at the bottom would work well if we jumped in and changed the tent to something like 216, raised the tent opacity and set it to invert, and if we also dropped the intensity down to 50-ish percent. Or we could use these pants with uh, the lower leg wraps down here and just change the hue to around 200 to get a similar color. With our core clothing options selected, let's take a look at something I haven't worn since middle school. Headgear. There are a bunch of options for headgear, including full-on animal heads that can be used to create some of the additional races like bear, bird, and lizard folk. If, you're going, uh, if you were doing that, you'd probably want to go with bald hair so it didn't show up weirdly, but you can always change that later. There's also goggles, hats, antlers, masks, hoods, and pelts. Let's go with this kind of Robin Hood-esque hat, but let's change the hue to 155, drop the saturation down to 35, and increase the brightness to max to get a similar green to the capelet uh, Zeresh has on already. You should always spend good money on what goes between you and the ground, unless you're a monk and don't wear shoes, in which case this doesn't apply to you. But for Zeresh it does, so let's pick some boots now. Uh, there's a bunch of options here as well, and I always flip through them, but I oftentimes find myself just falling back to simple leather boots, which unfortunately hides our leg wraps, but I don't mind that too much since they're kind of blue and I would prefer them to be white to match the feather, and since we can't do that, we may as well cover them up a bit. We already have a capelet, but we can take a look at some of the back gear anyway. There are capes, of course, but there's also shields, swords, bows, and arrows, halos with various majesties, wings both skeletal and feathery, as well as backpacks, auras, and a turtle shell is even available on some races so that you can make a turtle. Let's grab this cool bow and quiver set. Uh, now we can take a look at our arm and hand options just to see what's available. There's a few different glove varieties, some arm wraps, as well as some bracers. I don't think we need to overcomplicate her look, so we'll skip them for now by selecting the empty block up here. The belt, such, uh, the belt situation is actually similar, except there are also some robe and dress bottoms in here, along with the large variety of belts. Uh, there's some great flavor pieces in here, like the lantern, the book holster, the hanging crossbow, but our upper body choice already gave us this pouch bandolier, uh, so we don't need to add anything else here, I think. So we'll select the empty block again and go back. It's time to take a look at weapons. Zeresh is already packing a sword on her side and a bow on her back, but let's look at what options are for putting something in her hands. There's a whole bunch of different choices here from bows to swords, instruments, whips, staves, guns, hammers, shields, claws, and just general magic effects. I think since she does already have two weapons that we can leave this empty, but let's take a look at the other hands options. In our left hand, we'll see options for all the same items, except some of them, like the shields, will be from the opposite side. We can give her a cool shield to have in our left hand so she can wield her sword with her right. Let's pick out a fitting base now. She looks kind of like a ranger, so I'm thinking one of these woodland options, but there are choices for arctic tundra, exploding rock, fall trees, cobblestone, a dock, magic forces, and more. Let's go with this grassy base with a stump and hit done. Now we can take a look at animal companions. There's birds, lions, dogs, dragons, foxes, penguins, and a host of other beasts to choose from here. I like having some kind of flying companion for recon, but it's hard to say no to a corgi uh, companion, isn't it? Uh, 
It's even harder for me to say no to a giant flying squirrel though, so we're going with that. Uh, that's all of the main design options, but it should be noted that if you go to the menu on the left, there are links for editing the body and face, sharing the character, exporting it, and a vague options menu. Click that and we've got some options for flipping character direction, duplicating them so we can make easy variations, and layers and visibility, which gives you some fine-tuned control over where items are in the layers and the ability to easily hide them. I'm good with where everything is though, so I'll just hit save, but if you mess around with it and want to get back to normal, you can just hit the reset button and then save and then done. Uh, with all of that out of the way, we can click on showcase up at the top to get a good look at our new character. And then on the arrow uh, in the top right of this uh, section, uh, we can get export options. They can email it to you or you can just download it from here. Uh, we'll give it a second to generate the final image. And if you have export character card enabled as well, uh, you may have to click allow to a prompt about the site attempting to download multiple files. Enabling it makes a nice playing card type image and the character image is just a transparent PNG with all of the options we selected baked in. If you make your own characters, please feel free to send them to me on Twitter at EncounterLib, damn you Twitter and your username limits, uh, or just use the hashtag lofi dnd. I love seeing and hearing uh, about people's characters and we can use it as a repository of cool tokens for future characters or just inspiration. Uh, after you've exported your character art and are ready to make it into a token, you can import it into Token Tool, Photoshop, or VTTA's Tokenizer module, which I'll be using uh, to round out this video. You'll want to ensure that you've got the module downloaded and installed in Foundry already, and then jump into your world. Head over to the Settings tab, then Configure Settings, and click on Module Settings. Find the Virtual Tabletop Assets Tokenizer module settings, and let's set an avatar slash token upload directory where our files will be uploaded, or rather saved. Uh, navigate to wherever you want your tokens stored. I'll keep them in my specific worlds folder in a folder called tokens. If you want to do the same, uh, but you don't have a tokens directory, you can click the plus icon up here to create a directory and name it whatever you want. Get to whatever directory you want to use and click select directory. Make sure your token size field is set to something over 200 for better quality. Uh, I'm using 400 personally, and we should be ready. If you don't have an actor for your character, create one by clicking Create Actor in the bottom right of the Actors tab in the sidebar. Then if you have Tokenizer installed and activated properly, when you open the character sheet and click on the avatar, it will open the Tokenizer window where you can set the avatar image and the token image. We can upload our card image to the avatar section by using the add layer option in the middle. If you already have it on your server though, you can use the one on the right. Uh, then for the token, click on the same button under the token side and upload that image as well. It will probably put it in front of your token border, so use the arrow keys on the layers to move them into the correct position. We can also delete the unnecessary background layer. If we want to rearrange where Zeresh is in the token, we can unlock her layer by clicking on the lock, which enables us to move around the image and zoom in and out with your scroll wheel. When the positioning is correct, you can also set a tint for the background color of each layer by clicking on the circle next to the image. Uh, from there, pick a color and it will be applied. If you do it to the token border layer, just keep in mind that it will hide your image if it is the layer above it. Uh, you can get rid of the tint by clicking the clear tint button next to it, uh, and if there's a color in your image you want to sample from, you can click the eyedropper tool and pick a color from the image and see a live preview of its effects. If you want your background color uh, or your image to spill out beyond the token border for whatever reason, you can also uncheck the mask icon on the border layer which tells Tokenizer to hide things that go uh, beyond the range of this image. There's also a center image button to the right of the lock icon, which will take your image and center it uh, if you want to get back to a neutral starting place. Uh, last but not least, you can save the image by hitting the download button in the actions area under the token side and hit OK. You'll get a message about your files being saved, and then you can see them in your character sheet and by dragging out your token onto the map. You've now got a new way to make character art, and you know how to use it in Foundry with the tokenizer module. You can find more token borders online or make your own and use them in the tokenizer as well. I hope you all liked this little digression into character art, and if you didn't, that tokenizer is at least useful to you. 
I have another video fully scripted, which I'm going to try to record this weekend as well. Then I'll be focusing on how you can host Foundry yourself and a few other secret projects that I'm working on. Thanks so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.